Hello, everybody. This is Bradford once again, um, coming to you from Storystone. And today I have a story, um, a non-fiction story, which means it's real, and it's about living lightly. And the book is entitled The Three R's, Reuse, Reduce, Recycle. And you've probably heard these words before, but, you know, I don't think we can be reminded enough of how uh, we could use these things to live more lightly on the planet. And you've probably heard of things about living more lightly and sometimes it's confusing. What do we do? How do we help the Earth if we know there's climate change and the climate crisis and there's pollution? What can we do about it? And you know what? Especially children, you can make the biggest difference in the world. So this book will show you how you can make a difference. And then I have a song called E-C-D-C-I-C-A, that I've written just for you. So let's listen to the three R's. Reuse, Reduce, Recycle by Noria Roca. Do you know the letter R? It's the first letter in three words that teach us different ways to fight pollution. It is the R in reuse, reduce, and recycle. Do you know these words? Reuse, things that are still in good shape, such as your big brother's jacket, reduce the amount of things we throw away, such as paper cups, and recycle old things to make new ones, such as a puppet out of an old sock. Here's some ideas. Here's your brother's old jacket. Reuse that thing. And here are some things they made out of old products, cardboard boxes, corks, tubes from your paper towels and toilet rolls, newspapers, <laughs> broomsticks. You can make a lot of things at home by reusing things and recycling. In the town where Paul lives, people throw away garbage bags into a garbage bin at the corner. In the morning, a garbage truck empties the container and takes the garbage bags, do you know where? To a garbage landfill or a dump, which is a huge place in the countryside far from the city. There she goes, doing her recycling. And they're going and taking the trash to the corner, to the rubbish bin, but he's thinking, where, where is this stuff going? It just doesn't disappear. It has to go somewhere. Now, in Paul's town, however, there are so many people and so much garbage is produced that every landfill is full already. And nobody knows where to build another. So, they have built a huge furnace called an incinerator to burn all the wasted material. Nobody likes to live close by. People think the smoke coming out of the chimney is harmful to plants, animals, and people. There's the factory. This is where it starts actually, right here, where the dump garbage truck comes in, dumps it in, burns it up in a big kiln or a furnace, and then it goes through the processes here of uh, um, comes out, burns it up, smoke, 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 and more smoke. And not very happy birds. That's pollution. That's air pollution, boys and girls. At Paul's school, they have talked about the huge amount of waste produced in just one day. And they have decided to reuse as many things as they can. That means they know they will use every object many times until it breaks or cannot be used anymore. At his school, they paint both sides of all sheets of paper, use the empty cans of paint to keep paper clips and rubber bands, and use the pieces of paper left over to make wonderful collages. Do you have any other ideas of how you can reuse things at home? Talk to your parents about it. Here's a lot of cool things that were made from reusable items. And not just at school, boys and girls, but also at home. What can you find to reuse and make some fun things? At home, everybody reuses as many things as possible. Paul wears the t-shirts that his big, excuse me, that his big brother has outgrown and also plays with many of his old toys. Can you guess how many objects on the page that I'll be showing you may be used over and over? Paul's brother outgrew his bike and now Paul rides it. And since he has no use for his tricycle anymore, he has passed it on to his cousin. There's a big brother helping little brother 
Looks like he made a notebook or something. But here are things you can reuse. You don't need to throw it away. An umbrella, a backpack, a coat, bolts and screws and clothespins and rollerblades, cherries. And these are things. Oh, look at that pencil. That sure was reused. Wow. But some things can be used over and over and over before you throw them away. Something else we do at home and at school is trying not to waste water or electricity because this way we help take care of our planet. It seems very little, but the drops of water from your leaking faucet could fill up a bathtub in one day. So keep the water and lights off when they're not needed, of course. And here's a girl brushing her teeth. And notice she turned the water off. You know, first she rinsed the brush. First, she rinsed the brush, and then she put some toothpaste on it. And then she turned the water off, and brush, 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 brush. And then when she's finished, turn the water back on and rinse the brush off. Don't let the water run while you're brushing your teeth. That's just wasting water down the drain. And here's a boy having a nice bath, but notice the dripping faucet. Up above, the shower head is dripping. Drip, drip, drip. All those drips add up, boys and girls, to wasted water. So have your mom or dad take a look at that and see if they can fix a leaking faucet. Now, when Paul and his family go shopping for food, they take their own baskets or bags made of cloth. By doing that, they won't have to ask for plastic or paper bags. At the supermarket, and we'll reduce the amount of plastic and paper made by factories. Reducing means using very little. Only what is needed. And there's mom showing a can. Yeah, you can recycle a can. And, uh, and be very careful when you look at packaging, when you buy something. Say, God, do they need all that packaging on there? You know, why do they use so much sometimes? You wonder. But taking your own bags to the shops, that's a good idea. They do a lot of that here, which is wonderful to see. Plastic bags are very handy, but sometimes they end up in the sea, where they can be dangerous for animals. Turtles may take them for jellyfish and eat them, and they might get tangled up in the plastic rings used to hold cans together. It is very important not to litter the ground, the woods, the beach, the oceans, or the city. When I grew up uh, back in the United States, we had a song called Don't Be a Litter Bug, and it went, please, please, don't be a litter bug, please, please, don't be a litter bug, please, please, don't be a litter bug, it's not good for the earth. And here's some boys and girls picking up litter. Wow, God, look at all that. Whoa, in the ocean, plastic, and it all comes, well, from what, from us, from people. And then the animals are hurt by it. So don't throw it in the ocean. Uh, don't waste those material to begin with. And when you can go out and help pick it up, that's doing a good thing for the earth. You can make a difference. At Paul's school, they throw all paper and cardboard into a special street bin. And then trucks pick up everything and take it to a paper mill, where used paper and cardboard is shredded and washed until it becomes a pulp that is wet and soft. With this pulp, they make paper again. When it gets dry, we have recycled paper. Here's how it works here, if you can look at this uh, this drawing. Oh, there's the recycled paper. Let's see if I can see it. Ah, so it comes in here. Here's the paper, the waste paper, put in the big bin. Oops. It's washed. It's pressed. It's driven through a drying machine, of course, and then rolled up into rolls and comes out as paper, like that roll right there. So look for recycled paper, you know, and you can make paper at school or at home, too. Practically everything can be recycled. Paper and cardboard, plastic objects, glass, cans, all these things are first shredded, ground, or pulped. And then they go through different processes that make new drinking cans, glass bottles, plastic, and plastic containers. At school, you can make paper paste out of torn and wet old papers. Or at home, you can do that too. And here's old papers. Here they're making a, a paper paste. And there's the old papers, squashing it up. You can find these recipes online if you Google uh, paper paste and making paper. And these are things made with boxes and paper paste. Cool stuff. You can have fun with that. Do some art. 
Let's reuse it. Let's recycle it. Now, Paul's parents have told him that food scraps can also be recycled. All food that otherwise would be wasted can be made into fertilizer, which is food for plants. The fertilizer produced this way is called compost. The banana peels and lemon rinds Paul has just thrown into the garbage may become food for plants, like all food scraps. That's great. There he is. There's Dad with his pitchfork. And here's uh, Paul and his friend putting some compost. It's dirt, really, what it is. All those organic wastes become very fertile soil that you can add to your garden for better plants. And there's a rabbit and there's a squirrel. Very happy. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, but if we want to recycle, we have to put the waste in special containers. Now, in the kitchen of Paul's home, there is a container for things made of plastic, metal, or glass, and another for all the other garbage. Also, all newspapers and magazines are neatly tied in packages so that they also can be recycled. There you go. Bundle it up. Compost bin, recycling can, newspapers. And these are all things right here that, uh, which ones can be recycled? Let's see. I think just about all of it. Might be kind of hard to recycle your coffee pot, unless it's made of metal. Um, but most of these things can be reused or recycled. A broom, you know, if it gets used enough and it's old and falling apart, you may have to throw that away. But we can throw away fewer things by recycling, reusing, or reducing. At schools, at some schools, they also collect used batteries. The children have been told batteries may not be recycled and that they pollute a lot. So it's very important not to throw them in the garbage. That's why the children have made a special container for them. Once it is full, they'll take it to a recycling center. And some shops, by the way. Some office supply shops take old batteries too. And then they recycle them. They don't put them in the dump. And then the metal from the batteries will be used to make new ones. The drawings to decorate the container are the work of Paul's class. Nice job, isn't it? And you recycle at home, too, and not just at school, but they made these containers. Looks like a handy wipes container, wet wipes container. Decorated it and put the old batteries in there so they don't go into the dump, into the back to the earth. Poisonous batteries. If we waste less and recycle all we can, there'll be less pollution and we'll be able to live for a long time in our little planet, breathing smokeless air, swimming in clear waters, and strolling through the woods and countryside free from garbage. Paul thinks it's worth the effort. How about you? Ah, oh, look at all the birds and the animals. The air is clear, the water is clear. Yes, oh, and the fish are happy too. Here are some things you can build in the back of this book. You might be able to find this book in the library or Google how to make a birdhouse out of some milk containers. And here's uh, things you can make from stale bread pudding. <clears throat> Something to do with stale bread. Interesting. Google that one. And here's an experiment you can do to see how long it takes things to break down or to disappear, like with a lemon peel or a strawberry or plastic problem is plastic takes a long time to break down it doesn't go back to the earth sometimes for hundreds of years here's a notebook you can make out of scrap paper so google that how to make a notebook and that's the book called the three r's we use reduce recycle now a quick song before we go and this is a song i've written recently and i'll be playing it on my native american drum from the united states whoa look at that thing this was made in New Mexico. It was a present from my wife. And I have a song called ECDCICA. And there are some lessons to learn from this as well. well. It's fun to sing. You can jump to it. You can jump rope. You can do jumping jacks. You can dance to it. And also learn about the words ECDCICA. Each of those means something. And in the next episode of Story Stone, I'll be sharing that with you. But here's the song. E-C-D-C-I-C-A 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 Live like 
completely every day energy flows from the sun cycles go round and round diversity is key to life for you and me mother earth is our hometown ecdcica 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 live lightly every day Communities rock, interrelationships roll, changes never stop, adaptations are a treat, nature sure is sweet, Mother Earth is all we've got, ECDCICA, 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 live lightly every day, well it's up to you, it's up to me, there is no planet B. This is paradise, nature sure is nice, so go and hug a tree. E-C-D-C-I-C-A, 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 live lightly every day. One more time, E-C-D-C-I-C-A, 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 live lightly every day. That's all for this edition, that is episode of Starry Stone. My name is Bradford. So glad you could join me. And next time, the next episode, we'll be talking about that E-C-D-C-I-C-A. Meanwhile, you can think maybe about what those letters could stand for that have to do with the planet. All right, live lightly, boys and girls, moms and pops. And see you next time on Starry Stone. Bye.